ahadith on this subject. In summary, Allah's Messenger was commanded to face Bayt al Maqdis during the prayer, and he used to offer prayers toward it in Mecca between the two corners of Kaaba, so that the Kaaba would be between him and Bayt al Maqdis. When the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, migrated to Al Madinah, this practice was no longer possible. Then Allah commanded him to offer prayer toward Bayt al Maqdis, as Ibn Abbas and the majority of the scholars have stated. Abu Bakr reported in his Sahih that the news of the change of Qibla was conveyed to some of the Ansar while they were performing the Asr, the afternoon prayer toward Bayt al Maqdis. And upon hearing that, they immediately changed their direction and faced the Kippah. Now you may say, why is he repeating himself? Because these are just different, different translations or narrations of the same Hadith. What I'm trying to point out to you is the authenticity and how many scholars have reinforced this particular idea. Does everybody understand that? Yeah, I haven't lost it. I'm just like repeating myself. It's actually, there's a, there's a reason that this is our methodology. We teach you something, we first show you the Quran, then we show you the Hadith, and then we show you other Hadiths that are similar to the Hadith we already showed. And then we tell you what scholars said about that, and how many scholars said the same thing about that. So this is an amazing methodology because it establishes authenticity. One quick question. Okay. Atika is in Quran or in Hadith? I did not read in Quran. Atika is in Hadith. Just like Salah is commanded in the Quran, but it does not tell you in any singular verse how to pray. It tells you some of the positions, but the only way you can learn how to pray is from Ahadith. What about in Quran about prayer? It doesn't tell, mommy, no, doesn't it, tell. It is written, I read it, I was surprised. I will, again, I read it. Bring it next week, I will bring and you it. can read it to the whole no, class. I but I, as the teacher of this class, there is no place in the Quran that tells you how to pray. Okay? There are places in Ahadith, but no place. And I can't let you walk out of here with that misunderstanding, because I'm responsible to Allah. There is no place in the Quran that teaches you how to pray. No, it doesn't uh, teach you. Uh, right. I yeah. was wrong. I did not say it teaches. Okay. But it is written about prayer. There, it's written all over the place. The word Salah is all over the Quran. But it does not teach you how to pray. You, you don't have one verse that says, okay, you stand in the PM, and then you go into the coup, and then you stand back up, and then you go into sujood. We do not have it, folks. It is not there. Okay, this is from Ahadith. And it's, you just, I don't want you to go out here with some wrong information, because as soon as it hits the masjid over there, the Imam Sykes taught that the Quran teaches how to pray, I won't have a place to teach next week. <laughs> So I beg you, don't go out and say that. That's not the case. No, I'm sorry, I don't mean that. It's okay, that. I, I know. Don't mean that. But I just have to defend myself because I'll be the one that they'll criticize, not mom. <laughs> I love you all for the sake of Allah. It's 10 minutes to 1. Please join me at the Master for Prayer at 1 o'clock.